you go members it is the appointed time and we have formed the quorum thank you for joining us in the panel on developments meeting this afternoon in the meeting today please sit according to your usual seats in lash co venue uh, room one item one confirmation of minutes lc paper number cb brackets one five six four slash twenty to twenty one which was issued uh, which was the which is the minutes for the meeting on the twenty fourth of November last year. The draft minutes have been sent to members and we have received no proposed amendments. If there are no other views, please confirm the draft minutes. There are no views, so the meeting the minutes is endorsed. Item two information papers issued since the last meeting. These papers have been set out on the agenda. If there are no questions, then Mr. Tony Chair, thank you, Chair. There is one thing. I've sent a letter to the Chairman concerning the planning for the site in the um, restricted area. We have put in that item on the list of outstanding items. Since there are a lot of proposed amendments, so the administration will um, we will let the administration decide when we will put it to discussion. That is item twenty seven. Item three items for discussion in the next meeting. Please refer to C B brackets one five three one slash twenty two twenty one brackets one. That is the list of outstanding items for discussion and paper zero two list of follow up actions. As I said the item proposed by Mr. Tony J concerning optimizing the use of the lands released from frontier closed area, that is item 27 on the list. Then the items for the discussion in the regular meeting dated the 23rd of March, there are two proposed items. The meeting will be held at 2.30 p.m. that day. The two items are improvement works at Khao Sai Village Pier and the improvement works at Lai Chi Chong Pier and also Kai Duck Development's remaining infrastructure works for developments at the former one runway and South Apron Phase 2 Package F landscaped elevated walkway to the new acute hospital. Do members agree that the items be discussed on the 23rd of March? Thank you. Then item four. We shall invite the administration to join us. This item is the proposed creation of a non-civil service position equivalent to directorate rank in the Development Bureau to coordinate and implement the measures under the Invigorating Island South Initiative. Members who would like to ask questions, please press the Request to Speak button. For this item, we have the Deputy Secretary of the Development Bureau, Mr. Vic Yao, and the Principal Assistant Secretary of the DB, Ms. Louise Yan. Before members ask the questions, we will invite the two public officers to walk us through the item briefly. Thank you, Chair and members. I will brief members on the item briefly. Concerning the policy address, proposal of Invigorating Island South, we propose to create a non-civil service position equivalent to the rank of D2 in the D Development Bureau Planning and Lands Branch for a period of five years to lead a, an interdisciplinary team of Invigorating Island South Office to coordinate with, all, with other relevant bureaus or departments to take forward the project. We would like to consult members on our proposal. The vision of the Invigorating Island South is to make 
This often district is sports full of vibrancy, vigor, and velocity for work, life, explore, and fun. We have made references to the energizing Calhoun East office through coordination, taking forward various projects, and also and also create um, building facilities. We would like to promote um, innovation in the district. The Invigorating Island South Office will consult the public and private sectors in taking forward the strategies. We would like to enhance the cultural and recreational facilities in Mojo Kang and Aberdeen, re revitalize the industrial buildings, and also consolidate the GIC sites in the district so as to put forward, take forward the single site multiple uses principle. We will do beautification work for the public areas and also increase the walkability. During the consultation with the public, we will identify more areas for improvements, like the Energizing Calhoun East office. The Invigorating Island South office is not intended for, not intended to take over the role of different government departments in Southern District. It is. It will take a role of coordination among bureaus and uh, departments concerning the rebirth of Ocean Park and also the um, developing the former quarry site into a water sports center. The Invigorating Island South Office will create synergy by providing coordination. Taking forward, um, making reference to the energizing Calhoun East experience, we will redeploy manpower to form the II at the Invigorating Island South Office to take forward the projects. That's why we propose creation of a non-civil service position equivalent to the rank of D2 as the head of Invigorating Island South Office to lead a team comprising engineer, town planners, and also um, architects to take forward the work. The head of the office role is to lead his team in reviewing the planning and land use of different areas in the southern districts and provide strategic and macro advice and also optimization measures and also interact with different stakeholders, including offices from different bureaus and departments, the district council, professional bodies and NGOs and so on. Given the importance and also the um, experience required for the position, we think it is suitable to pitch the position as rank D2. And also, the office should be taken up by non-civil servants so that we can identify the most suitable person to take up the post. Making reference to the Energizing Calhoun East office, we propose the position to have a term of five years so as to follow up the progress of the projects. After, before the completion of the five years term, we will review the need and consider whether the position has to be retained. Thank you. So this is the proposed creation of a D2 non-civil servants position for a term of five years. Now, for those who have pressed the buttons, we have Dr. Martin Liao, Tong Li Xie, Mrs. Regina Yip, Kenneth Lau, and Mr. Holden Chow. Four minutes for each of you. Maybe there will be a second round. Dr. Martin Liao. And also we have Mr. Leung Chi Cheng. Dr. Martin Liao, four minutes. Thank you, Chair. The policy address proposes the outline of Invigorating Island South. I support the direction. According to the paper, you would make reference to the Energizing Calhoun East project to set up an office for coordinating the projects. This is a mega scale project, so we need to take learn from the past experience. For example, the energizing Calhoun East is a decade and the transport infrastructure is still not ready. The government proposed an infrastructure-led development model now in the area concerning the transport network. The transport network has not reserve capacity for the invigorating island sub projects. So I think we will have to speed up the transport network developments in the area, otherwise the transport network will be overburdened. Now the head of the invigorating island south office, on the paper I don't see the word transport.
So concerning the role of the office, we will also uh, make plannings for transport network. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Member, for your question. Transport is very important. As mentioned in the policy address, it is the right time to look to revisit the opportunities for developments in the Southern District. Since the commencement of the South Island Line, new impetus has been injected into the area, so that's an opportunity. Transport is indeed very important. The Invigorating Island South Office will propose suggestions and planning, but before that, it will carry out TIAs to make sure that the Developments will not bring about insurmountable um, transport a pressure on the transport network. As I mentioned, the new rail line will bring about new opportunities. However, there are restrictions. For example, it is um, there are restrictions for people to go to the Stanley Peninsula and also Aberdeen and also um, Adelaide Chow. As I said, um, there are opportunities and there are limitations or restrictions. The office will be responsible for coming up with um, ideas. However, before that, they will carry out due assessments to uh, concerning transport. Um, since I um, member asked about the issue of Island South, we have already invited MTRC to submit a proposal and at the end of 2020, the MTRC has already submitted a proposal to the government and currently Island uh, South line is actually part of a review. Mr. Liao, do you have any follow-up? I want to ask whether transportation is under the ambit of your bureau. Mr. Yao, well, I did mention this briefly in my introduction. The IISO uh, cannot replace the transportation Bureau. Of course, the TPB has a role in ensuring transportation arrangements, but the IISO's role is to observe the transportation impact the project has on the area. whether it be more on the macro level such as um, railway or local level such as pedestrian crossways and uh, traffic light improvements, the IISO can still follow up with these matters. However, I want to reiterate that the division of work has not changed. Mostly, uh, strategies will still be from the part of the Bureau and the ISO will be looking into the strategic and macro planning of the area. Well, I hope that you understand that there will be better uh, coordination for uh, transport in the area, but I think that the message is very clear. Mr. Tony Tse, four minutes please. Thank you, Chairman. I am of similar view with Mr. Martin Liao that, in principle, we support um, the creation of this post. I uh, agree that uh, we should uh, create a non-civil service position because then we'll be able to identify a suitable candidate. I notice that um, this office is on quite a small scale. We need to be practical and to ensure that we have enough headcount. The Invigorating Island South Initiative 
gives me huge expectations because you're talking about invigoration and I do hope that you'll be able to ensure vigor and velocity in your initiative. I hope to see an indicator. What do you hope to achieve in five years? For example, on uh, land use and in promoting single site multiple use in the district with the creation of this post, what would the head of IISO be able to achieve in five years to show us that there is such an invigoration. We don't want to see the project being delayed for a decade or more. You use the term invigorate. Therefore, we do have high hopes on what you're about to do. So do you have any indicators on your achievements? You say you can only help coordinate the transportation. But who's in charge? Who will be the one ensuring that all the bureaus uh, will be able to speed up the pace? And otherwise, you wouldn't be able to describe this initiative as an invigorating initiative. Mr. Yao, thank you, Mr. Zhe, for your question. The IISO is on a smaller scale compared to Energizing Kowloon East initiative. Uh, due to the difference in districts, uh, Kowloon East is a, a bigger area, Island South, we are just in the infant stage and therefore uh, we do not need as many people. So we only need about half the number of people compared to Kowloon East. And we believe that it is a suitable startup. We first need to draw up a working plan before we can set indicators. We have not yet created this position. Uh, we have already employed a contract staff to help us with the initial work. And right now we are working on a plan to see what opportunities there lies in the district. Uh, we want to review land use in the district. and to promote single site multiple use and improve facilities within the area. The IISO will formulate a working plan and we are now working on it. When the head assumes position, he will be able to execute the plans. It's similar to what we did with Energizing Kowloon East Initiative uh, to first uh, draw up a cons conceptual plan and then to set indicators to see whether the achievements have been made. Mr. Zhe also asked about the velocity of the project. Would the IISO help with the work? My belief is that IISO will add value to the district. This project will be district oriented. And it will help with the coordination with other departments. 
so the IISO can act as a bridge to coordinate uh, the work from different departments. And thirdly, um, it will also take into consideration the views of the public. There will be many improvements made to pedestrian connectivity. And this area needs such an office to help identify improvements within the district. And I think this can answer Mr. De's question. Um, there will be a velocity together with a strong coordination with different departments. So how long would these projects take off once the head assumes his post? We'll need to uh, wait for the conceptual plan to come into place. The ISO is now working on preliminary plans. So when the head assumes post, it will take another few months uh, to make decision on the projects. And then within a few months, we'll be able to have a more detailed work plan. Uh, Mr. Yao, please be concise in your answers. You've already used uh, seven minutes. There are still uh, six more members waiting to speak, and we need to conclude this by 3.20. So please, everyone, be concise in your questions and answers. Mrs. Regina Ip. Oh, this post is actually a non-civil service position, and compared with Energizing Kowloon East office or is the head of the EKEO also a non civil service position? No, actually, um, it's actually a D3 position and actually a civil service post for EKEO. But this time you're considering a non civil service position for. IIS. Can a non civil service post be able to take up these responsibilities? Or are you going to hire or recruit um, civil servant retirees? Well, we do not have a one profession that can actually really fit into our position, not an engineer nor a town planner. We want to be innovative in ISIS, and as I said, there is no set profession that can fit into this post. Therefore, we hope to try to identify suitable candidates outside the civil service structure. And this post will need to understand uh, the government operations and cooperate and coordinate with other departments. But I'm sure that any work experience will be able to uh, work. Well, can I be frank? Do you already have suitable candidates in mind, Mr. Yao? Oh, this is a public uh, ten. Their public recruitment, and therefore we we'll, can only identify and candidate through this public recruitment exercise. Chairman, um, this Island South initiative has been discussed by the um, Southern District Council for a long period of time, and actually many of them are riding on the new initiative of Ocean Park. Mr. Liao mentioned just now that uh, residents are worried about transportation. On one hand, they hope to see um, prosperity in the district, yet they're worried about traffic congestion. I hope that the future head of ISO will be able to ensure that the railway will be completed on time. And we did mention this uh, when we discussed about Ocean Park. Uh, when there's any traffic congestion, then everybody will be affected. 
and we hope to have actually some sort of sea transportation and Ocean Park suggested uh, um, service uh, via sea uh, to Yongshu Wan and maybe to other areas because one extra option will really help. Um, when Typhoon Mangut hit, the whole road uh, was shut down. We hope um, you can really do something to help improve the transportation in this area. Mr. Yao, yes, uh, we have heard your views and we'll bring your views back. Also, I hear that uh, members are supporting this proposal, although there are some concerns with uh, transport. Well, thank you for members' views. Next is Mr. Kenneth Lau. Four minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. On the COVID characteristic, local tour uh, is a very uh, is a um, trade with a lot of potential. So after the implementation of the initiative, we can create more opportunities of local cultural tours, and it will be a new hope for local economy. I support the government in creating a position to take forward the office work. It mentioned the paper mentioned about reinvigorating the jumbo floating restaurant as a local tourist attraction, and also there is a traditional sampan tourism in the southern district. I hope the administration can incorporate more um, modern elements and developed water sports and education centers near the uh, Shamwan, um, near the AMC, so as to encourage consumption and attract tourists, so that tourists can enjoy and learn the culture and history of Southern District more. I hope the government can think out of the box and tie in with the development of this ocean park. The ocean park has a very uh, prime location. There should be uh, deep tourism and also synergy can be created with the southern district. There should be traf there should be traveling tours and um, local tours during night time as well. However, I share the worries of local residents. I hope the government will not be too focused on developing tourism and neglected the capacity of local infrastructure. Stakeholders may lack uh, platforms in voicing their views. So how will the government consult the stakeholders, collaborate with them, uh, to optimize the plan. Otherwise, there will be a lot of grievances. Thank you, Chen. Thank you, Mr. Lau, for your opinions. You have mentioned some suggestions concerning developments of tourism. We have heard them concerning whether we would be too focused on tourism. Actually, the Invigorating Island South Initiative has tourism elements, but it is not just a tourism initiative. We wanted to make the Southern District a place suitable for living, working, and having fun. For those who work in the Southern District, we hope the working environment is improved. In terms of having fun, we hope tourists will find the district attractive. So there are tourism elements, but it is not just limited to that. When we put, when we take forward tourism developments, we will be mindful of the impact on the transport network. The uh, CDB will be the one to lead the project. However, the ISS, IISO will coordinate between different bureaus so as to achieve a synergy. When the uh, lower park area of the Ocean Park is opened, how we can provide connectivity between Ocean Park and the Southern District for local residents and for tourists. Now that is some that is something that the IISO can work on. 
and also in terms of enhance, enhancing walkability of the southern districts, it is also under the IISO's purview. So we are not just focusing on tourism. Next, Mr. Holden Chow, you have four minutes. Thank you, Chair. Concerning the Invigorating Island South Initiative, the scale is explained in the paper. I understand you need someone to become the head of the office. I can appreciate that. However, according to the Deputy Secretary, this is a um, this is a trial. You are trying to find someone outside the civil service structure to be the head. So this is a good mindset. We always said that it seems that um, there are no K KPIs for better performance within uh, the government structure. Now you're trying to find someone outside the civil service structure to have a team. So I wonder if you can provide some innovative KPIs for this head so that he has some targets to achieve within his five his or her five year terms. The public really need these KPIs. In the past, to be honest, there are no KPIs for the work of government's departments. And it is very difficult for members of the public to gauge the achievements. Now we have someone outside the civil service structure. So I guess you're trying to find someone with a um, innovative mindset to invigorate the Southern District. So have you considered any KPIs for the future head? How can you make it more apparent for the public in terms of um, uh, the valuable works and so on? Maybe the public will have more confidence if you can provide them with these KPIs. Thank you, Mr. Chow. Concerning the indicators, you said there should be indicators to evaluate the office work. I think that is a very fair comment. Our plan is that after the assumption of office of the head, there will be a work plan. This is like the Energizing Carlton West office. They would have a chart to tell us their work plan. So when the head has finalized the work plan, the work plan itself will become an indicator for local residents and district councillors to gauge the implementation of the project, whether the project is being taken forward according to the timetable. So that should be a detailed work plan. And on the other hand, the ISO will be very pragmatic in taking forward the projects. For simple and quick win projects, these projects may be smaller in scale. However, these um, district improvement projects can provide immediate benefits. So they will implement these quick win projects rather than um, having these projects implemented together with um, other projects. There are three more members. So we should be able to finish the, uh, this item by 3.30. I will draw a line here because we have three items today. Ms. Tilong Jishang, four minutes. Thank you, Chair. The Invigorating Island South Initiative is uh, very innovative in particular with the rebirth of the Ocean Park. We can make it the Southern District or uh, we can make this district into a new um, tourist attraction. This is very good. 
the thing is, we always think. Let me put it this way. Um, this is supposed to be a um, project we need, which need um, full coordination among government bureaus and departments. Now, the administration wants to hire a team of eight to discharge the duty. So the mission in the next five years will be taking forward the Southern District's developments according to plan. This team of eight will take forward the project, and no matter how successful their work is, they will have to leave or they will be hired um, under other arrangements. So will it be more efficient or desirable if you hire a consultancy to do it rather than spending 1.38 uh, million dollars for hiring eight persons? In five years, it will cost some 60 or 70 million dollars. The government has the tendency of engaging consultancies to follow up on development projects. So why don't you use the same method? Rather, but rather you set up an office and ask and uh, put this office under the um, deputy secretary's purview. And concerning Brownfield site. The study has been completed. It is done by a consultancy rather than um, the PAS. So for these positions, the workload is not very heavy. Members have asked whether um, these, whether they can, whether the job can be put under the same team as well. Of course, I don't want to overburden the teams. And. You may need to hire people. However, paying $60 billion to set up an office, I wonder if it is, um, it is good money spent. I'm not saying that the project is not important enough. You, are, you already have a D3, rank D3 directorate to look after a team. Well, that duty can be discharged by the consultants as well. Well, actually, personally, I think that even if we have this team, you may still have the need to engage a consultant, Mr. Yao. Thank you, Shen. Thank you, um, Mr. Leung. Concerning the price tag, besides the head, which is a new position, the other staff under the team will be redeployed, so no new resources will be required and also the nature i mean the scope of work of the iiso is quite wide it involves planning for example um optimization of usage of gic sites and also works for example enhancing workability along the promenade it may identify sites where the path is too narrow and improvement works is needed. So many a times the office has to follow up the projects from the conceptual stage to implementation. For consultants, they are only responsible for the conceptual stage. For the office, it will participate from the very beginning, from conceptual inception to implementation. So after you have come up with a proposal, will you consult the public? There will be public consultation with local stakeholders. It is a very important task of the office. It will widely canvas views during its line of work. For example, the Brownfield sites examples quoted by the member the office will cover 
not just the study stage, but even the construction stage. So I think um, it is more suitable to um, follow this model. Next, Mr. Abelau, four minutes. Thank you. The Invigorating Island South Initiative was proposed in the policy address. It seems that it is a very innovative initiative, which is uh, a concept. So I wonder why you have to set up an office when you only have the concept. In terms of coordination among departments, are there really no one? Are there really no talents available for that? We're talking about a D two rank, so maybe it is better for civil servants to take up the role. Um. Mr. Yao. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we attach huge importance to the Invigorating Island South Initiative, and we believe that with a dedicated office and having a head to lead the team will be conducive to the overall development. I did say that the position of head will be to leading an interdisciplinary team. And uh, we don't really uh, fit uh, engineers or town planners into this position. And based on the experience with um, energizing Kowloon East Office, when we did recruit a civil servant. We wanted to be more innovative this time and try to find someone outside the civil service structure. Well, actually, you can just find the district officer to assume this post because the DO will need to uh, lead initiatives. Well, yes, uh, I respect your views, but we are talking about leading an interdisciplinary team, and we do need uh, someone of certain caliber. That person will need to uh, promote uh, reviews on land use in the district, enhancing pedestrian connectivity, uh, leisure facilities, and these all involve a uh, profession such as engineering and town planning even though um not any one profession can fit into this position i can only say that this post will need someone with interdisciplinary skills Uh, we see many projects um, other than energizing Kowloon East Office. Uh, there's also new town development in New Territories East. And I do believe there is a need to set up a dedicated office uh, for New Territories development. Well, Island South is actually quite small. Why do you need a dedicated office? And why do we not have an initiative called Invigorating Kutong North? Uh, Chairman, I really can't give you an answer here. We believe that energizing Kowloon East was a successful initiative, and therefore we want to set up a dedicated office for Island South. We believe um, a new attempt could be made here. Well, so what are your standards? What are what is the benchmark? I mean, you might want to have a dedicated office when you reach a certain threshold. What is the benchmark here? I do want to see something uh, that is a more easily understood. Chairman, well, I hear the views of members. However, we still believe that at this stage, a dedicated office is suitable. Well, with the experience of energizing Kowloon East and now with the Invigorating Island South initiative, 
in future we would have some basis on our considerations for other new projects. Last, Dr. Cheng Chong Tai, four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I think residents are most concerned with traffic issues. Some people may try to understand the impact it has on the district, and some residents may hope to participate or be consulted or be consulted on the design of the initiative. And I'm not sure whether you have invited such views from the public. Are you going to require certain prerequisites for the new post, uh, such as um, un having a background in the local district or a pro having a professional background in town planning? Do you have certain criteria that you would need to list out in your seek for suitable candidates? Well, or, well you're asking for three million per year for this creation, but this is only uh, effective for five years up to March 31st of 2026. I don't quite understand how you are able to attract um, suitable candidates to assume this post for only five years. Ocean Park will only be able to resume its operations and development starting next year. Would five years be too limited? Well, we want to be frank here. You may end up with only a slogan, ultimately, of invigorating Island South. You're only asking for a post for five years. So there's not much you can do in the next two years. So what can you achieve in three years? You throw out a concept that you're going to invigorate Island South, but we cannot really see anything concrete in your plans. Mr. Yao, uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Chang. We are not um, trying to identify a certain profession for the job. We hope to find someone with interdisciplinary skills, with a knowledge in engineering, town planning, and so forth. In our public recruitment exercise, I am confident that we'll be able to identify a suitable candidate for the job. Well, you asked whether the post will be too limited in time. We are talking about a period of five years, and I do not agree with your view. We believe it is appropriate. And we are quite confident we will attract Can, um, candidates. And we already uh, have staff on board working on preliminary work in the district and drawing up plans. The work is ongoing. Therefore, there will not be any uh, suspension in operations and work in the initial stage. Well, I'm sure that if success can be seen after five years, then um, 
um, you can of course come back to ask for extension for the job. I hope that the team can really help us in our initiative. Well, in summary, as in the uh, meeting on December 1st of last year, members are mainly in support of the Invigorating Island South initiative. I do not hear any objections to the creation of post today. However, I would like to remind the administration to submit more detailed information when you bring this up to ESC. And to uh, set out the requirements for this post so that the establishment subcommittee can consider this prudently. IIS should not only be a tourist initiative, we also need to enhance the conditions in the district. Uh, many members are concerned with the traffic impact and, and especially concerned with the South Island Line West on when it could be in commission. So I hope Mr. Yao will bring all these views back to the administration. Thank you. Next item. Let's invite the administration in. Agenda item five. Progress of work by the Sustainable Land Town Office, SLO and Staffing Proposals of SLO Planning Department and Railway Development Office of Highways Department for taking forward and implementation of development and conservation projects related to Land Town. We have already circulated papers to members. Members who would like to speak, uh, please press the speak button. We have a PowerPoint. May I invite Mr. Vincent Mack to take us through the paper? Uh, Chairman, I'd just like to say a few words first. Mm. Our team is here today to brief members on the progress of work by the SLO last year. The SLO was set up in July 2017, and it's almost four years. The SLO has done a lot of work, and when we set up the office, uh, LegCo approved the opening up of four posts, which are to expire by March of this year. Our work at SLO is ongoing, and therefore we suggest uh, an extension of four more years for these four supernumerary directorate posts. And last year, we were allocated uh, one billion in conservation and to work on study in Khao Yi Zhou. And due to these new works, we suggest uh, creating uh, four more posts, um, two in SLO, uh, two in planning department, and also one in real, uh, one in planning department, and one in railway development office. I'd like to now defer to Mr. Michael Fong. Thank you. I would now like to take you through progress of work by SLO and the staffing proposals of SLO Planning Department, Railway Development Office of Highways Department, and also on the uh, ongoing projects that we have been um, undergoing next, uh, last year. Uh, currently, 
uh, we do have um, um, uh, un head under which we have uh, works and planning and conservation. Right now, there are six directorate posts. Uh, one is the deputy head for works and one head and then two deputy head and three chief engineers. Uh, we only have um, four um, uh, um, we have four uh, supernumerary posts and many of them are due to expire by March of this year and they work in conservation and planning and these works will continue. Therefore, we suggest to retain a four supernumerary directorate posts until March 31st of 2025 and to provide directorate support for the implementation of new and ongoing development conservation initiatives in Lantau. On the phone. In terms of development projects, the office is actively promoting the uh, taking forward the Tong Chung New Town Extension projects. The Tong Chung East Reclamation Projects is going in full steam. Last Friday we have been granted we have been approved uh, 19.3 billion dollars in the finance committee for the first phase site formation uh, project, which will commence in middle of this year and complete in phases between 2024 and 28. And also, we will use Tung Chung New Town Extension as a trial point for providing smart, green, and resilient facilities. This is the first. Works, uh, capital Works project, which will introduce, which will incorporate Eagle Shorelines and River Park. There will also be smart features like district cooling system and common utility tunnels. Another major development project is the P1, is the engineering study on road P1, Taiho to Sunny Bay section. Last Friday, we were also granted the funding required for the study which will be completed in 30 months, starting middle of this year. The office will also take forward different local improvements, pro improvements works to improve the living environment and living quality of the residents. Since uh, January, we have completed all the proposed projects, including beautifying the existing pier and the footbridge. We will take forward the remaining projects, including the coastal pedestrian access, parking facilities and also uh, sewerage works and drainage works. For Muiwo, we plan to carry out improvement works at the pier, including a uh, promenade, public interchange, and so on. For Taiyo, we are carrying out the remaining phases work we are in the detailed design stage, including building a pedestrian bridge, improving the uh, Yonghao Temple Park, and uh, the tr uh, enhancements of trails. In terms of transport, we will review the traffic transport and capacity to receive visitors for Lantau. There will be a study. We will examine the internal traffic and transport, and also the portable enhancements measures which will be completed in the second half of this year. And then we will follow up with other departments in terms of the uh, enhancements projects. In terms of conservation, in the first half of the year, we will be able to complete the conservation study of Shuihao, Puyo, and Taiyo. And then a second batch of areas will have um, ecological study commenced. Concerning conservation and recreation facilities, we are taking forward different proposed projects and initiatives for implementations of Lantau Trails and Recreation Plan. We will link up different tourist attractions in Taiyo and also improvement works, including um, waterless toilets, country trail, and enhancements of scenery. for. The expansion of mountain bike trail networks and practice ground in Muiwo and Chima, uh, Chima Wan it is mostly completed. Now we are in the detailed design stage. 
for uh, these projects. And we have also been actively engaging in public engagement, education, and promotion activities. We have five expert groups to advise on these matters. In terms of education, we have been using different platforms to educate students and members of the public in terms of conservation and sustainable development of land time. The previous works are all very challenging, which will be rolled out in phases in the coming years. So we propose the retention of four directorate supernumerary posts as shown in yellow until the 31st of March 2025. Besides the ongoing works, in the coming few years, there will be other new and extremely complicated conservation projects in mega scales. So we propose creation of two directorate numer supernumerary posts shown in blue, including chief engineer and one chief town planner position until the 31st of March 2025. We also propose the planning department also propose creation of a supernumerary directorate post of chief town planner, and also the audio of the highways department proposed uh, creation of a supernumerary directorate post of chief engineer. Now, for the reasons of creation of these posts, in December last year, we have been um, the finance committee has granted funding for commencing the study for the KYC artificial islands in the central waters. We have began we have begun a tendering and the study will be completed. Um, it is a mega scale project involving some one thousand hectare sizes of waters. There will also be infrastructure works and rail links and also different assessments will be carried out, including uh, environment assessments, TIA, and so on. And also um, the possibility of climate resilience and will be explored. It will involve high-level steering and coordination. And experts and stakeholders will have to be consulted at different stages. The current directorate manpower is not enough to cope with the com complex and a complicated and uh, large scale work involving the artificial islands study. That's why we propose the creation of two, uh, one chief engineer and one chief town planner post in the CDD, and also one chief town planner under the planning departments and one chief engineer under the highways departments to take forward these studies. And also, we would like to step up conservation work in Lantau. Last year, we have created the, um, we have uh, com prepared the Lantau Conservation and Recreation Master Plan to provide a um, framework for the work. Besides um, conservation of natural resources, we also we are also committed to conserve um, the cultural resources. After completion of these studies, we will um, take forward the conservation measures in phases. And also, we will set up a cultural and, his and historical um, depository with um, the uh, relating to the rural culture, agriculture, and traditional festivals in Lantau. Under the framework of the master plan, we will take forward the conservation measures actively, especially the biodiversity and um, cultural and recreational um, corridor in the north and in the south. To step up the initiative, a $1 billion Lantau Conservation Fund was set up for to assist um, landowner and stakeholders to take forward conservation work, we have started accepting applications since April uh, last year. The first batch of projects will commence in March this year. The second part of the fund will support minor local improvement works taken taken forward by the government. The first batch of local improvement works will commence 
in the first half of this year. Take forward the above conservation work. We propose creation of a chief town planner supernumerary post to take forward conservation work of in terms of cultural and natural resources in Lantau and also to monitor the usage of the fund. Thank you. Now we have four members who have pressed the button. Mr. Michael Tian, Tong Yi Che, Kenneth Lau, and Ms. Alice Mike. Members, please press the button if you want to ask questions. Mr. Michael Tian, four minutes. Thank you, Chair. The Sustainable Land Cloud Office has created a lot of positions in one go. Now I have two questions. Now concerning the progress of the artificial islands, I think the government and members of the public watching us are wondering when the fifth railway will be commissioned. Otherwise, it will lag behind the housing developments too far away. And also, every day, every morning, people have to uh, crowd into the West Rail line to go to work. Now, the government has asked the MTR to, should ask the MTR to carry out a study concerning the financial arrangements. If the government agrees to the MTRs um, agreement uh, plan, then it will take another two years. Then it will take 10 years after the railway is completed. So the soonest we will have the rail is 2038. Since after 2034, population intake will start for the artificial islands. So they will have to wait four years for the railway. Now, for those living in the new territory west, they are cramming into the west rail every day. By 2034, there will be some 200,000 people moving into the Hong Shui Kyu development area, albeit in phases. There will be a lot of grievances, so the government should look at how to compress the timetable. Now we are already in the second and third step. The MTR will spend two years in carrying out the study, and then the government will give the MTR a response. I think you can group it together. If you are able to compress the time frame and by consolidating the second and third steps with MTR, then you can save two years' time. For us, two years' time is very important. So after hiring the new staffers for the office, you should be able to achieve that. And also concerning the reclamation in Sunny Bay, you said the study would take 30 months. As of today, it is already 35 months, and there is no news yet. At the time of the meeting, I put forward a motion to request the departments to consider assigning um, a multi-purpose use for the uh, Sunny Bay area because it is not um, suitable for a residential area. For example, you can turn it into a, an international raising track. It is already 35 years, so we need to know the progress. And we need to know the direction of the study. If I know, if I am assured that the reclamation for, Yano, for Sunny Bay is uh, beneficial for Hong Kong's developments, then it will be um, easier for me to vote for you on the um, Finance Committee meeting. Mr. Tian, um, concerning the railway, we share the same goal. That is, we have to commission the railway as soon as possible. However, we are talking about 28 kilometer um, long railway, so it is very complicated. Compared with reclamation and building the uh, housing units, I think railway um, will com will be completed uh, sooner. Can you compress the uh, two steps? Well, uh, we will. I will invite my team to address that. Concerning the study of Sunny Bay reclamation, we are sub we have submitted the proposals uh, to the Legislative Council, and it is in um, it is in the wait it is in the uh, waiting line already. Concerning the railway, uh, the railway departments, please be brief. Concerning which 
company should take forward the railway we are we keep an open mind. It is an independent section of railway of 28 kilometers in length, so there are more flexibility in terms of how it is implemented. We are, we keep an open mind, and we heard members' views. In we attach high importance in terms of completing the railway before the population intake. So concerning the Tongchong reclamation progress, there are a few years discrepancy. Um, comparing with the completion of the railway, so this has caused people to lose faith. So you need to assure members that you will be able to tie in the railway developments with population intake. Chairman, I request that the Sunny Bay study um, be given to us before it is submitted to the Finance Committee. Thank you, Mr. Tian. Um, yes, we will try to uh, rush, uh, speed it up. If not, then uh, you can give a written response to Mr. Tian. Mr. Tony said, Thank you, Chairman. The government keeps on emphasizing people oriented approaches. Well, I do think that um, you need to extend this to the Sustainable Land Office as well, because many projects focus on the uh, technical issues. Now we are talking about five engineers and three town planners. So this is already better because in the past you would only seek engineers. I'm not saying that engineers are not adequate. However, as we take a people-oriented approach, we need to understand that engineers focus mainly on the technical problems and might somehow neglect um, P uh, issues related to people. In Annex uh, 1 and Closure 6, I see that um, there's a mention of uh, management work. So I think that uh, many professions are suitable. Why do you have to request an engineer post? The whole office needs different skills and knowledge. Uh, sometimes uh, surveyors feel that they have been neglected and that posts for them are not created. I want to try to understand right currently you're asking for creation uh, for a, a retaining directorate posts. How about non directorate posts? Do you have enough manpower to support the entire development and conservation of Lantau Island? Can the administration provide us with more information. Um, Doc, uh, Mr. Lau from CDD. Yes, thank you, Chairman. We are actually of similar views. We want to be people-oriented to promote development and conservation. In the SLO, we do have a cross-disciplinary team with engineers, town planners, architects, uh, surveyors, and landscape engineers. At the CEDD, we have a separate department uh, on, on surveying work. And therefore, when we promote our work, we will attract different professionals uh, to 
uh, different professionals on our team. We do see a huge financial deficit. How come our eight poles cannot take up the work as set out in enclosure two and then to take up the work at, instead of opening two new posts? Four of them were actually extensions. Uh, they do have a huge workload. Mr. Fong has already taken us through these posts. As for the creation of new posts, in the initial stage, uh, we wanted to make it a permanent post. However, um, uh, taking, taking into consideration members' views, we decided to create supernumerary posts. Um, there's a lot of work to be done at the central waters. Therefore, um, we are only giving them. Uh, we're only opening a directorate post at the low lowest level. Mr. Kenneth Lau, four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm in support on the creation of posts on the premise that the government pays more attention to the development of comprehensive uh, traffic network. Uh, they want two roads, one from Weiwo to Lantau North, and then the other is from Dongchong North to uh, Tai O, uh, so that uh, there would be more options and roads uh, to bring us to Lantau Island. Uh, with the commissioning of the uh, Zhuhai Macau Hong Kong Bridge, um, this has become an important infrastructure and um, many vehicles uh, will go to Lantau Island to go on the bridge. Therefore, we need to open up all roads to cater to the increasing demand. And more and more people um, now uh, without being able to travel will go over to Lantau Island for hikes and therefore you can see the traffic impact uh, getting worse. It's not very convenient to go into Lantau Island. Uh, we know that with these new initiatives, it will only attract more people to go to Lantau. Therefore, without any comprehensive uh, transportation network, we will not be able to conserve the island. Therefore, this is actually very important, and the government must be pragmatic in assessing the traffic in Lantau and to try to open up new options for the public so that more people can participate in the conservation of Lantau Island. The government right now is now working on a study on the number of visitors that they could accommodate on the island. I would like to remind the government that there are only 2,000 people living in Tai O, but every year millions of people flock to Tai O. Therefore, you cannot only build roads based on the living population in Tai O. You must also consider the number of tourists arriving each day. and. Um, look in the long run. Therefore, the government must consider the number of visitors and tourists before coming up with a concrete plan. Mr. Mack, uh, thank you, Mr. Lau, for your support in the creation of our post. The CEDD is now working with the SLO to look into the traffic infrastructure and the number of tourists it can accommodate. And by the end of the year, we'll be able to submit our report to 
the Legislative Council. Any follow-up, Mr. Lau? No. Next, Ms. Alice Mack. Four minutes, please. Chairman, we always talk about uh, sustainable land tau. Uh, if we do not develop, however, it will be hard for us to conserve. Traffic is actually a bottleneck for all of us. How can we ensure development and at the same time conserve the area for those living there? Uh, now with a new road and new bridge, the road to Tongchong has become more congested. Well, people have already moved in, yet the railroad is still not yet complete. Now, uh, Mr. Tse said that we now look at new supernumerary posts, but how can we consider? the impact it has on the residents and people working there. Would the SLO, other than promoting hardware development, also consider the software development, which is mainly transportation? What are some of the measures that we can adopt uh, to develop the north of Lantau yet conserve the southern part of Lantau? We see many people going on hikes during holidays, and you see people everywhere on Lantau, whether it be Mui Wo or Tai O. You just see crowds everywhere. How can you conserve the area? Well, try waiting for the bus at Tai O uh, during holidays or during the new year. You would have to wait for a very long time before you can get on the bus. So what can we do to conserve the area and what are your principles behind it? Well, let, Mr. Mack, let me talk about uh, traffic and then the CDD can tell you more about conservation. We understand, Ms. Mack, about the issues related to development because a development will bring along inconvenience to many people. We hope um, to first uh, take an approaching in improving the transportation before development. So in Kao Ijo, we are now taking this approach to match development needs. The SLO is a cross-disciplinary office. Other than engineers, we also have many different um, people with all kinds of expertise, and we hope to improve our town planning so that those who move in later will find it much easier to get around. Mr. Lau. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Mack, for your question. In conserving the South, we see a uh, very a good ecology and environment in many areas. Uh, members of the public uh, like to enjoy the landscape during holidays. We want to strike a balance between conservation and development, and that is of utmost importance. At the end of last year, we came up with a blueprint on the future development of leisure facilities in Lantau. We're able to set up some ecological corridors in the south of Lantau uh, to try to enhance um, leisure and recreational 
facilities. We hope to enhance the capacity so that more people can enjoy the area. We, of course, need to pay attention to the transportation arrangements and to see how we can accommodate all these people. And with the support of Let's Go last year, we set up the Lantau Conservation Fund, which can help us with uh, local conservation and minor works in the vicinity to improve the environment. Ms. Mack, uh, did you or do you wish to speak for a second time? Uh, last, Dr. Junior Tho. Thank you, Chair. Concerning the proposal to create two directorate posts, I disagree with it. I do not support it. First, concerning the chief town planner position, according to the terms of reference, there are five items. The major item is to lead and supervise the study in relation to the central waters artificial islands and there are four sub items but you may remember that we have just approved uh, granted 500 million dollars for a three year study before the completion of the study you want to create a post for leading the supervising the study i thought we already had a consultant to do this study. So why do we need a new position to supervise this study? According to the organizational chart, there are six deputy directors and there are six departments. I believe there are a dozen of directorate officers to supervise the team. I think you can just redeploy one director to supervise the consultants to do the cons to do the study why do you need another one or two million dollars each year for a new post i have not touched upon the railway department's post yet well for five years we need another seven or eight million dollars why bother should you waste money like that secondly concerning railways in Appendix 2 and Appendix 3, we already see a list of directors there. You want to create a chief engineer 2 and 3. I don't see what actual works need to be done concerning the Lan Tao because I think you are already taking forward the you are um, coming up with the uh, general um, planning for railway developments in the central waters and land how. So why set up the post now? The central water study involves interdisciplinary and interdepartmental personnel besides uh, planning and developments. There is a 28 kilometer long railway to consider. So concerning this study, we propose creation of three D1 rank supernumerary directorates posts. Concerning Dr. Ho's uh, questions about the planning department and the highways department's work, I will invite the team to answer him. Please be brief. Uh, plan planning department, yes. This is a planning and engineering study which will look at we which consider our a one thousand hectare large artificial island and the C B D three study within um uh twenty four months. The work is immense. So the proposed position of the chief town planner will provide high level steer to ensure that the development's direction is in line with our spatial planning territorially. And also, he has to make sure that the consultancy team is knowledgeable to the latest planning parameters and standards. 
uh, lots of assessments need to be done, including landscape, town planning, and um, ventilation, which will be carried out by experts under different teams under the planning department. So the chief town planner can provide leadership so that um, supports can be provided to the consultancy team directly to enhance their speed. Uh, railways department or highways department. The railway is about uh, 30 kilometer long involving the central waters and some parts of it will have to be uh, submerged under the sea. So the technology involved is very complicated. Uh, the director has to be responsible for the alignment, uh, fire requirements and ventilation requirements, and also the signaling system, as well as the capacity. These are these require the very um, professional knowledge. So we propose the creation of a chief engineer post under the railway, uh, railway development office to supervise the study. Please be brief. Because I have to, con I have to um, wrap up this item already, Chair. I don't think they have to hurry. Because if there are questions, there are problems. We need to look at them thoroughly. Because the um, establishment subcommittee will discuss the item again. But you can give me uh, your, give us your views right now. I'm not a participant in the establishment uh, subcommittee. I would like to give my views from the development perspective. Now, you have already spent $500 million to engage a private consultant. Now, you have six divisions. Under the territorial planning department, you want to add another town planner to supervise the consultant. But when you have asked us for the $500 million funding, there was already someone in charge of the consultancy uh, study. You can just ask him to do that. After asking for $500 million, you want to create another post? Why don't you ask the original supervisor to follow up the project? It is complicated, I know, because it involved $500 million. I haven't finished, Chair. Second question. The same goes for railway. 30 kilometers is not that long. Of course, the submersion, uh, submerging it under the sea is complicated. However, there is already an export expert. You are. It is just still on. It is still on the drawing board. So you have asked your two questions. Are there any um, any supplements from the two departments concerning the? planning department's work in the past few years. We have done a lot in terms of increasing land supply, including brownfield size, transitional housing, and single-site multiple use. We have not created any new directorate posts. Post. So the chief town planner is temporarily taking up the pre preparatory work of the Central Waters Artificial Island Study. But when the study actually commences, we need an expert as directorate level to supervise the consultancy team. Mr. Ngai, when the consultants commenced the study of uh, railway planning, they will create a, a computer transport model to calculate the demand and capacity, which will take into account the existing railway network. It requires an expert to supervise their work to ensure that it is it has tie-in with the uh, railway network parameters. And also, we have to check the methodology and the results of the study to better, div to better plan for railway. I don't think it is very convincing. It's all right, uh, Dr. Junius Ho. I think you have repeated your questions, but it seems that you are not happy with the administration's answer. I suggest you 
as a chess development um, uh, department, approach Dr. Junius Ho for discussion. And also, before submitting the item to the establishment subcommittee, please address Dr. Ho's uh, questions. In that case, Chair, let's put a few more words on the record. Sorry, I have to wrap up this item. Besides uh, Dr. Junius Ho, who had strong views against uh, creation of positions, uh, other members seem to support the creation of posts. I think um, the developments in the north and conservation at the south project is very complicated, and we do not uh, question the need for um, creation of new posts, bes uh, except for Dr. Junius Ho. Members have made a lot of suggestions in terms of uh, transport infrastructure. We need to make sure that uh, transport infrastructure comes before population intake. So I think the project can be submitted to the establishment subcommittee. However, you have to take into account the members' con uh, views, especially Dr. Junius Ho's views. For the sorry, um, I have another press conference, so I need to hand over to uh, the Deputy Chairman, uh, Mr. Abelau, to conduct, uh, to chair the next item. Let's continue with the meeting. This item is the extension of Suho Wan Water Treatment Works and Improvement of Water Supply to Sha Tin, Shang Shui, and Fan Ling. I shall invite the administration to join us. Members who would like to ask questions, please press the Request to Speak button. So for this item, we have several officers with us, including Mr. Thomas Chen Tak Young, Principal Assistant Secretary of Development Bureau, Ms. Irene Pang, Assistant Director of Water Supplies Department, and also their team from Water Supplies Department. We have Ms. Mabel Lam, Ms. Ho Ka Ho, and Ms. Wong Nam Ping. Now we invite the administration to walk us through the paper. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, members. We are briefing members on three public works projects. First, it is uh, Works 365WF, that is Xiu Ho Wan Water Treatment Works Extension, main works. It is to enhance the increase the water treatment capacity of Xiu Ho Wan Water Treatment Works from 150,000 cubic meters per day to 300,000 meet cubic meters to address the uh, Northland Tower ho um, housing development needs. The water treatment works in Shuho Wan has been operating since 1996 to provide water to um, the airports, Tongchong, Sunny Bay, and, and Discovery Bay. With the development of the North Lantau project, including the free one-way system of the airport, Tongchong New Town extension, and so on, we expect that by 2028, the Shuho One Water Treatment Works will not be able to cope with the expected increase in water demand in the area. So we propose the project. The works project is for enhancing the water treatment capacity of Suho One Water Treatment Works, including enhancing its water treatment facilities. An area has been set aside inside the treatment works for the projects to build a new treatment building and also the uh, laboratory building. And also, 
um, there will be modification of the existing chemical building, the watering building, and slush thickener for an increasing the water treatment capacity. And also, the treatment works for providing raw water pump uh, will be to the uh, reservoir will be increased. Now, the water currently comes from Shekpik and Thailam Chung Reservoir. We will have to increase the water, raw water, which are untreated water supplied by these reservoirs to the Shihuan WTW. So we will have to lay an approximately 1.2 kilometer long water mains with a diameter ranging from 1,200 1, mm to 1,400 mm along the South Southland Road to increase the raw water transfer capacity from Shekpik Reservoir to the Shuhuan Water Treatment Works. And also, we will have to be construct a new raw water booster pumping station at the Shuhuan to, in to increase the raw water transfer capacity from Tai Lam Chung Reservoir via undersea pipes. The entire project, according to money of the day prices, is estimated at $3,694.9 million. The As most of the works will be on government land and the water treatment works extension will be within those premises, we would not need to resume any private land. The Silho One Water Treatment Works extension is a designated project under the Environmental Impact Assessment Ordinance. Um, the EIA report was approved in December 2004 with an environmental permit issued in January 2005. In December last year, we conducted an environmental review concluding that the evaluation and recommendations presented in the approved EIA report are still valid. We have also assessed the traffic disruption during construction. And there will not be a major traffic disruption during the construction phase. In November uh, 2020, we also consulted the Tourism, Agriculture, Fisheries, Environmental Hygiene and Climate Change Committee of the Islands District Council and members recognized the importance of the project. The suggestion uh, was that um, the 600 meters water main section might be a concern to traffic and therefore we are going to deal with this separately due to mem due to concern and uh, we are looking into widening South Lentau Road to try to reduce the disruption to traffic and we are going to continue to work with the relevant departments to try to enhance the area. We hope that we'll be able to gain the approval of Finance Committee in April and to begin works in the third quarter. The extension of the water treatments work will be completed end of 2024 and be commissioned then for the Puyo uh, pump station and in the laying of the water mains and it will be completed by 2027 due to complicated works. After 
after the completion of this project, we are going to apply for allocation uh, to enhance our uh, treatment so that we'll be able to uh, commission all these together in 2027. Well, for the other two parts, um, please be brief because we do not have much time left. All right, I will briefly take you through the other two items. The second item is 54WS, salt water supply to Sha Tin Area 52 in Shui Chun O. At present, fresh water is provided to Shui Chun O area for flushing. We anticipate that the freshwater demand uh, will be inadequate by the year 2025. Therefore, we propose to provide salt water supply to the Shouchun O area to uh, relieve the freshwater supply system, which is about 3,000 cubic meters of fresh water. And uh, we'll be able to use this freshwater capacity to cater for the demand. Um, up till 2028, uh, we are looking into constructing a new saltwater pumping station of a pumping capacity of 4,000 cubic meters per day. Construct a new saltwater service reservoir of a storage capacity of 820 cubic meters and laying about 2 kilometers of associated water mains. Cost is estimated to be 136 million in money of day prices. Now we have already assessed the impact, and there will not be much impact on the environment and on traffic. We hope to gain the approval of Finance Committee in April and to begin our works in the third quarter. It will take 48 months for completion of the project because the roads in Shou Chun O, Bok Chun Road and Shou Chun O Road are quite busy in busy roads and there may be traffic disruptions. Therefore, we may need to uh, work on the project at particular times. The third item is 55WS, uh, the reclaimed water supply to Shangshui and Fanling. This is mainly uh, for the uh, management of uh, water supply we want to try to um, use expansion of a lower grade water such as uh, seawater and recycled water for non-portable purposes, uh, which are the measures under the updated total water management strategy. We would like to take this opportunity uh, to uh, looking to up to upgrade the Shekwu Hoi sewage treatment works to tertiary treatment, and we can process the treated sewage effluent to produce reclaimed water for non-portable uses, uh, which is mainly to use for uh, uh, toilet flushing, and that can supply can be extended to 
Kutong North and Fanding North New Development Areas. Uh, these areas are currently using fresh water for flushing. We have already laid uh, some distributed mains and this is actually the last part in that area which is the construction of Shekhu Hoi water reclamation plant with a production capacity of up to 73,000 cubic meters per day laying of about um, pumping mains to connect the reservoir and also laying of mains and associated works and the we estimate the cost of the proposed works to be about one point two five billion and this will all be done on government land We have already assessed the environment and uh, there will not be any permanent environmental impact on the area. We have already also consulted the district council and have received their support also from them and from the Committee on Land Development, Housing and Works of the North District Council. We hope to submit this to FC in April and to begin construction in the third quarter of this year. And we hope to um, pro uh, supply this reclaimed water in 2024. Thank you. Well, as time is very tight, I think we'll need to extend our meeting by 15 minutes. Uh, because our original end time is 4.30. Our members, um, please uh, take note of um, RP 83A that if you have any direct or indirect pecuniary interest, uh, please disclose this before you speak. We have in line waiting to speak Mr. Tony Tse and Ms. Alice Mack. Mr. Tony Tse, please, four minutes. Oh, thank you. Well, if I understand correctly, I think our discussion time is until 4.55. Uh, some members have expressed earlier that uh, there is too little time for discussion for certain items. I hope that you would allow more uh, discussion time for members. I really think you need to give us appropriate time uh, in asking questions. Well, we only have four people here right now, so why is it a problem with time? We'll talk about three items here right now. I don't understand why these three are put together, with the exception of this all being related to water. So how can you uh, tie this uh, together into one big item? I understand that time is of essence. However, we as the Legislative Council really need more time in vetting the different proposals. So I hope you would exercise your discretion. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask about the Seoho 1 Water Treatment Works extensions because that involves around uh, 3.6 or 3.7 billion. I remember that um, um, the that the supply would be inadequate in 2025 uh, due to the construction of the third runway of the airport. However, the paper shows that um, that um, this can cater to cap uh, cater for the capacity until 2028, and now it will take six and a half years to complete the works. The third runway. Should all be commissioned in 2022. Now, why is there a, such a huge discrepancy with the supply in water? 
maybe I have misunderstood some of the figures. Um, originally, it uh, sh should take four years for completion, but now it takes a longer time. Is it due to the uh, complexity of the works or the increase in fees that now it need to take 3.7 billion? I'd also like to ask about the uh, fan link issue. I think we did discuss this earlier. I'd like the administration to give us more information. I remember you mentioned a policy amendment in 2019. Water resources are becoming more and more important. I'm not sure what your policy on water is. Do you have any other considerations on water supply in new developed areas? And how can we um, use our water resources in a better manner? Uh, so which public officer will take the questions? Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Chair, for your question. For Xu Ho Wan Water Treatment Works, we have to expand the uh, treatment works because of the developments in northern Lantau. There are adjustments to the development timetable of the northern Lantau. So currently, the expansion of Siho Wan water treatment works will be able to cope with the increased water demand. Concerning the cost, we have made reference to the Water Supplies Department's extension works in Taipo and Sha Tin Water Treatment Works. The estimated cost is very similar with those of the other two water treatment works. So the price is reasonable. Chair, I'm not saying that the price is too expensive. According to my original information, the timetable is different. Some developments have been delayed. So this will affect the supply of water. Why there has been less water demand? Because of it may be because of a delay in development. You have to provide us with more information. You have to account for such a sudden and drastic change. What development projects are lagging behind? You have to tell us. And also, why is the completion time two and a half years later than the original estimation. Now now my time has run out, so I hope that the administration can supplement me with the relevant information for the first part. And also about the second question, what about the reclaimed water policy? Concerning the extension project's time frame, it is not it has not been delayed by much. The first stage extension will require three years. We expect the mission at uh, the project to commence in the third quarter this year. By the end of 2024, the, the extra 150,000 cubic meters water supply will be realized. So after the completion of the extension project, we can move on to enhance the water treatment technologies and enhance the treatment facilities as a whole. And then the extra water supply will be delivered in one go. Concerning the price, we have made reference to the projects in other water treatment works. We don't see a drastic surge in cost because of the delay. Concerning reclaimed water, we have been working according to the updated total water management strategy in 2019. We have to explore 
lower grade water resources because we want to diversify our water supply. However, it rise heavily on the opportunities in terms of supply of reclaimed water. In the northeast district, the Shek Wu Hoi water treatment works has to be upgraded to provide tertiary treatments to treat water to be discharged to the bay. That's why we have been riding on the opportunity of the tertiary treatment works provided by the Shek Wu Hoi water treatment works so that after simple uh, work, reclaimed water can be produced. In terms of flushing, 85% of our population have been are using salt water in flushing. Together with flushing with reclaimed water, over 90% of the population will be using lower grade water for flushing, which has already met the total water management strategy. So is the administration not doing anything active in enhancing reclaimed water supply and just making use of whatever opportunities available? For new development area, we will enhance we will step up supply of reclaimed water because we can make good use of water resources by recycling um, sewage water. And it will also help to reduce um, discharge of uh, sewage water, production of sewage water. Ms. Alice Mack, I want to follow up on Mr. Tony Jess's questions. There are three items and they are all different things. For the Shuhu one, it is extension projects for uh, the uh, sh uh, Shatin area. It is a salt water supply for Shangshui and Fanlang. It is the reclaimed water supply. So, when or how would you decide that you would use reclaimed water for a certain area, and when would you decide that there should be a reclaimed water work in Shengshui and Fanlang? When would you decide that there should be a source water supply system in um, Shek Wu Hoi? And when would you decide that a water treatment works need to be expanded like Shu Huan? When and how do you make your decision? So is there any objective standards? Well, Since uh, these uh, works are required, we would like to make good use of the time and submit them all together to the LegCo so that um, members can have a consolidated discussion. Well, my question is not about um, submitting these three items under one bundle. By lining them together, I can see that there are different works like uh, salt water, fresh water, and reclaimed water. My question is, why do you decide to supply reclaimed water to Shengshui and Fanling? Is it because of the suitability of the location? And why do you decide in uh, providing salt water to uh, Shui Shui No? What's the consideration? Well, for Shengshui, the population is now using fresh water to flush because it is an inland area. In order to provide salt water for flushing, we have to set up a facility near the sea to provide sea water. The cost required for the pumping station will be a lot. For the Shek Wuhu water treatment work, it has to provide a tertiary water treatment surface. The water produced will be of high quality, so we just want to make good use of the result because after simple, some simple procedures, it can be used for flushing. We made the consideration based on cost effectiveness. For Shui Shui No, the area is now using fresh water for flushing. However, in Sha Tin, we also have 
salt water flushing. So we just need to spend another $100 million for providing salt water to Shoshino village for uh, estates for flushing. So from the point of cost effectiveness, it is more suitable to supply salt water for flushing. Thank you. So now you have made it very clear. I understand it now. So you do not provide uh, salt water to Shangshui Fanlane because it is more difficult and uh, involve high costs. So that's why you use reclaimed water. So after the projects, 90% of the population will be using uh, non-potable water for flushing. So do you have a target for achieving 100% of population using lower grade water for flushing? Or are you telling me that there are areas that um, have to use salt water, uh, fresh water for flushing? There are scattered areas, for example, villages, rural villages, which use fresh water for flushing. It may be not cost effective to supply reclaimed water or salt water for these areas to flush. And also if the usage rate is low, then the water will be stored for a long time and the water quality will be affected. So we need to make sure that the water quality is um, good enough for flushing. So do you, remember, so do you support submitting this paper for the Public Works Subcommittee? I forgot to ask Tony as well. Do you support it? I don't oppose it. However, I don't want to see them bundled up together. So because I only, the only thing common between these three items is water. Dr. Julius Ho. Chair, I want to be direct. I support these uh, infrastructure projects involving water supply. A lot of money is involved. I agree with the with my two colleagues about their observations. For water supplies, salt water supply and um, filtration, we should look at it on a macro basis. We have 7.5 million population and we have uh, the to land to tomorrow vision. We have the 2030 plus railway strategy. What about waterworks? For Lantau, um, you, you are only expanding the water treatment works. So I need to assess the value. You ha we have spent $500 million on the study of central waters and also um, on sustainable developments of Lantau. However, I don't think you have a comprehensive plan for waterworks. Water treatment works is only one of them. However, we have several reservoirs for example, Tai Tam, um, Aberdeen, and Pokfulam. Now, for the entire Lantau area, we only have the Shekpik Reservoir. According to enclosure one of Appendix 1, you said you have some raw water supply mains across the sea to supply water to Xiu Ho Wan. Now, the Raw water channels will be will split and to supply water to different water treatment works. However, what about the other reservoirs? For example, the Tai Shui Han Reservoir. How would you utilize the water there? Have you considered linking up? Have you considered using the Xiu Hu Wan site? To, create, to build a reservoir. What about the insulation lake in Sunny Bay? You can use this to store water. We will have continuous population growth. So what about the, what about a comprehen comprehensive and strategic planning for water supply? What if the water mains is damaged? So what will happen to Changguano? We are going to have a, um, the sorting plants in Changquano. So what is the plan? Does the water supplies department or the development bureau has a macro plan to show us? Or are you saying that it is enough to rely on Dongjiang water and also the, the sorting plants in Changquano? Maybe we can supply water from the desorting plant to Lantau as well. So we need a plan to have an idea. 
you are asking for some three billion dollars for these minor projects, for example, the uh, water treatment works expansion. We need to ensure that the money is well spent, and also after spending the three billion dollars, how long can the water supply and uh, the water treatment works um, last? How many how many people uh, water demand can be uh, met by the production of the uh, three hundred thousand cubic meters of uh, water? Thank you, uh, Dr. Ho, for your questions. Just now, I've mentioned that we have a total water management strategy. There are lots of different options to meet the territorial water demand. Under the strategy, there are different options, for example, expansion of uh, the reclaimed water supply. This strategy ensure that uh, we can meet our water demand as far as 2024. So we keep reviewing our strategy and when needed, uh, we will update the strategy. For reclaimed water, uh, we will consider uh, trying to use it in new develop in new towns and then uh, try to provide more water supply. As to the enhancement water treatment works, the WSD has been trying to make improvements and enhancements in many um, water treatment works, uh, such as in Taipo and Sha Tin. We are also uh, working on Ngautame Water Works Extension. And these are all important water treatment works providing water supply to our population. Silho One is also a strategic water treatment works, and we are taking this step by step uh, to try to make enhancements to cater for the water demand in Hong Kong. Thank you. I hope that Mr. Chan can provide us with more details after the meeting. Well, I see him uh, giving um, information here and there. I want to understand the macro approach of the Bureau. There's only one reservoir in Lantau right now. Are you considering upgrading other reservoirs or building another one? Or can you provide these details after the meeting? Yes, thank you. Mr. Chan, uh, Mr. Junius Ho, do you support this uh, to be submitted to PWSC? Yes, Mr. Chan and Ben. I'm sorry, Chairman. I was in another meeting and therefore um, I was late and didn't hear the first part. I know Seal Ho Wan will be able to improve the water supply, um, especially in Lantau. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. I understand one part will be upgrading the existing Pui Oral water pumping station and then bringing it along South Lantau Road. Those on South Lantau are concerned that uh, you will need to uh, block some of the roads uh, for construction. And uh, that will affect um, residents going in and out of Muifo as it will take an extra 15 minutes. I suggest that you would widen the road and also to lay the work mains on the widened part of the road. However, I do not know what your plans are. Can you provide me with more information on this, please? Uh, WSD, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
uh, for this raw water mains along South Lantau Road. This is mainly uh, um, pumping the uh, reservoir water to seal hole one for water treatment. Well, if we are able to If um, we are able to, um, if we don't need to block the roads for uh, construction, then of course it would be better. So there's actually, there is 600 meters in which we would need to um, excavate the area for construction. I understand you are suggesting us to widen South Lantau Road, however, uh, this is not uh, within what we can do in the WSD. Uh, we did assess the uh, traffic in the area and we have already consulted members of the public and the district council and for the 600 meters, uh, we have already taken this out of the project to minimize the traffic impact. Uh, we decided to do this at a later stage. And we want to see whether improvements can be made when we do the main laying works. The um, Councillors in Lantau uh, contacted me and hope that you remember these uh, 600 meters of um, trench excavation that needs to be done at a later date. Will you take this forward when you are widening the roads or what they are concerned that it might be delayed. So I hope you'll be able to tell us today which direction you are going to take. Are you going to widen the road or not? They will support it if you are to widen South Lantau Road, if you are going to do trench excavation and affect the traffic, then they will not support it. I hope you would uh, put this down on record that you will give us an answer today. Uh, we'll need to consider this carefully with the departments. Uh, we will need to uh, look into the tourism, agriculture, fisheries, environmental hygiene of the Islands District Council, and we'll need to look into the study results. So how long would that take? Uh, we will consult the District Council as well. So in order to widen the road, um, I think you really need to consider this very carefully because it's actually beneficial to the residents. But of course, you also need to look at whether you can accommodate this. Uh, well, the suggestion is to just widen the road since you are going to excavate the area. Why do you still need to study it? I think you should just do it instead of having to explore it further. Because what you are doing is actually just trying to relieve the traffic impact on the residents. Why do you have to wait for the uh, traffic capacity assessment? You still need to widen the road regardless. Well, we're just trying to work together with the different departments. Well, why don't you come to us for money at the end of the year? Well, we've already taken this part out to be dealt with separately. The next step is to consult the district council and then apply for funding at FC. Well, you're not able to uh, um, uh, commit to our um, request today. So how can you expect us to give you money? Well, 
since no other members have indicated their wish to speak and most of members seem to support this item, we are going to submit this item to the PWSC. Mr. Chan Hanban. Well, I do have my uh, reservations. All right. AOB, any other business? Oh, I now close this meeting. Thank you.